So we are Comp 1050 Animation 2D Tools, Week 2, Part 2, even though it says Part 1 here. Um, what we're really going to do this time, well, there's these two sections we're going to be covering today. One of them is adding animation to your uh, Flash uh, movies you're making. So we're going to talk more about the timeline, how to add animation, and so on. And then we're also going to do um, using um, inverse kinematics. Uh, today as well, and how to use bones and some basic physics through inverse kin uh, kinematics. So that'll be this like part uh, part three of this thing. All right, so you know Adobe Flash Professional Six, what it does allows us to you know uh, animate things like uh, change position through the timeline, color, transparency, rotation, all kinds of stuff, right? And that's what we're going to learn how to do. And we're going to do that with these symbol instances that we learned how to make last week. Right? So the first thing I want you to do is let's pull up that movie um, that's 0, 4, um, end, um, the end movie that comes in your code archive. All right? So just to see what it's supposed to, the end result is supposed to look. So if I pull it up, file, open, and I go to animation 2D tools. Under my code archive, and in here I've got my end, uh, sorry, 04 end.fla file, right? And it's kind of big for us to look at, so let's just uh, show all. Let's make that slightly bigger. Okay, a little bit smaller. So you've got a, it's like a poster, right, for a movie. That's what we got going on here, right? Um, you've got an actor, a couple actors in the, in the, on the movie itself, and some assets. You've got some um, text that's uh, 3D looking, and a few other assets. So if I run it, so Command or Control uh, Return, right, or Enter. If I run it, it looks like this, right? It's not bad. And then it kind of cycles through and loops again. Okay, so we got a couple things going on. If you look carefully, the original, the first actor is, he's kind of in, in, a, in kind of crisp right now, and then the, the actress in the back, she's kind of faded out or blurred out, right? So what happens is the cars come forward, and then as this, the title comes, uh, comes forth, she becomes more crisp, right? A couple other things happen as well. The city rises up. The city kind of rises up out of, uh, you know, from the bottom, so it kind of fades in, right, from uh, kind of transparent to, uh, uh, to fully opaque. And these cars kind of rush out at you, right? And they start kind of rumbling as if they're in idle. So kind of interesting. A little movie. It's not bad. There's a lot of stuff going on here um, and a lot of stuff to think about. So let's take a look. The finished product has a bunch of different uh, layers, right? And each of the layers, um, they're inside the cars uh, layers are inside uh, the cars folders and the actress folders, different folders that uh, um, we've used to uh, organize our movies. And if you notice, there's quite a bit of uh, frames. So we're going from frame one to frame 190. It's not a very long movie at all, right? So if we're, if this movie is 30 frames per second, right? If it's 30 frames per second. How long is this movie if it's 190 frames? Easy stuff, guys. Approximately. Not even, right? It's very, very quick. So you're looking at very, very small, a very small, uh, um, you know, time frame as an example, right? Um, and so the, the animation doesn't last that long at all. Okay, so let, let us start by, we're going to create this thing. So and this is how we're going to do it these days. We're going to kind of come up with a file and create it from scratch. So following the instructions from the, our lovely PowerPoint, it says we've, we've kind of viewed the, the, the start. And what we're going to do is we're going to um, open up our start.fla file now, right? So here we are, file, open. And we're going to open this uh, 04 start.fla file 
So some of the assets have been kind of given to us already. And we're going to just minimize the screen so we can see everything. Let's go to uh, 50%. Let's go actually lower. 40% was right. And the reason why my screen is so big is because uh, I'm projecting everything so it looks uh, much larger than it should. I'm going to kind of squeeze stuff, some of the stuff in here. So we've got a kind of a black stage. If I click on the properties of the stage itself, the stage itself is black. Like it's not the actual actors or the background colors or anything like that that's making it black. It's just the stage that's black. Okay. All of my assets right now, if I look at my timeline, and I'm right now I'm looking at the beginning. If you notice, there's a bunch of empty keyframes. So take a look at the stage. Right where my uh, where I'm pointing, right where my playhead is, and again the playhead is that red line, right? The red playhead is how I can kind of skim through the movie. So if I um, if I scrub the movie, I'm actually moving the playhead. I hold it, drag and hold the playhead to the right. And if you notice, as I move it, I can actually preview what's going on um, on the stage. So here we go. I'm kind of dragging it, dragging it. If you notice, already around f frame 40 or 45, I'm just going to kind of skip down here so you can see it better. So here's 40 and 45. Between 40 and 45, I'm starting to see these actors kind of blend in. Right? They're coming in. And if you notice, the actors, man and woman, they start to blend in around frame 20, but we can't see them. It's so dark, right? And then as we move towards frame 40, they start really to fade in, fade in, fade in, right? Here they come in, right? So there's two things happening here. Not only are they fading in, but they're also moving, right? So they're moving to the right and to the left. What do you see that's happening also? You see that actor's head? That actor is, he's actually got his head outside of the stage. We're not able to see that head, that part of his head, because we can only see that's in the boundaries of our stage. That stage is the only thing we can see. Everything else outside of it that's in the pasteboard can be there, but we can't see that what's there at all. Okay, so that's why when we run our movie, we don't see this actor at all with his head like this. If I run it the way it is right now, okay, and again, you see them, she's kind of faded out, uh, you know, faded in, it's the same like him. A couple cars are rumbling now, but not the other one. There's a, there's a third, the third car is kind of missing, right? And you don't have any of the text that we want. So we got a couple of assets, a couple of things that are happening, but you see his head is kind of cut off here. All right. So as we scrub forward a little bit more, and we come to around uh, frame 70, I'm just going to scrub along the time frame here, the timeline, our cars are starting to come in. Look, very, very briefly, a car starts to come in. The first one comes, 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 and it's coming kind of straight at you. And it actually looks like it's coming at, at an angle. It's not really coming at you. It's not realistic. Look at that middle car. It's not really driving at you very nicely, right? This one, the right car looks okay, right? But the middle car is kind of screwed up, eh? Look how it looks. Okay? Most people wouldn't notice that because it's too quick, right? But if you look at it, it's not really coming dead on. It's not coming straight on at you like it should be. Yeah. Now, the, red, the, the, the right car, if you notice, it comes, comes towards you, and then part of it leaves the stage. So if we do another uh, con command or control click, Right? The actors come on, and then part of the car is missing. Right? It's outside of the stage itself. All right. The reason why it's so big on the main screen here is because the size of this file of the actual movie is 1280 by 787. So it's quite a big file. It's quite large. Now what I'm going to do, just to make it so that it's we can view it a little easier is I'm going to change the display which is going to make my text just a slight big, uh, bit smaller right um, than what I was showing before no that's not what I wanted that's not what I wanted um, it's because I'm using my uh, the screen here I'm going to change my resolution. Yeah, 
It's because I'm using this thing. I'll go built in, uh, well, I'll go scaled. Yeah. And uh, the reason why it's scaled is it's working for the Xtron A, which is the uh, our, uh, our camera here. So I can't, um, if I change it, it's just going to make it worse. If I go built in retina display, you won't see anything on there <laughs> at all. So let's leave it alone. If, it was, if I was in another classroom, this other classroom is that are able to, I can change my display way up, but not this one. Okay. So again, the cars come in around frame 110, and then we move into frame, um, once we go into different keyframes here, 120, I'm going to just scrub across. There seems to be some extra keyframes here, like for, on my footer example, my information on my footer, but nothing really is happening. I don't see my cityscape anywhere. City remains blocked throughout the whole thing. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to do some different some uh, some changes to the animation that I got already in there. So again, what we're doing with animation is we're changing, we're moving or changing objects through time, and we're using the timeline for that. The only time you can see the animation changing is on keyframes. Okay, those are the main, if, if I was going to, if I didn't have motion tweens or anything else in there, like those blue frames that you see in your timeline, they're all motion tweens right now, right? But if I didn't have that, and all I had was these keyframes, that's where changes would happen in the animation. In fact, that's what we really are doing, but Flash is filling in the other details. They're doing the in-betweens, or the tweens between all the, uh, all the keyframes, if you will, right? So what do they do is they create uh, changes in position on the stage and change for size, color, filters, whatever you want to do. That's what, the, that's what motion tweens do. And they're actually calculated, they're generated by flash. Okay. And the term tween, you may have heard it before, basically it's a throwback uh, from classic animation where you had, uh, you know, our, like our friend Rui, who did things on, you know, cells, these, you know, actual, uh, you know, he would do these, the main frame, he would do his storyboards, and then from the storyboards, they would take these main cells, they produce these main cells, and then what the, the senior animators would do those things, the poses, right, the beginning and ending poses, and in between that, you'd have these junior animators that would come in and do all the in-betweens by hand. So if you had, like, a pose at frame one, and another pose at frame 20, and you had 19 frames in the middle, or whatever, 18 frames in the middle, then some junior guy would go through and do frame two, frame three, frame four, frame five, and so on. And it's not exciting work, from what I understand. My, our friend Rui was telling us that uh, it takes a long time, and um, it's not the, the, the most fun that he's ever had. But anyways, the great thing is Flash does it all for you. So there is no in-betweening here. Um, and you could do a frame-by-frame -frame animation if you wanted to in Flash, but Frash can extrapolate the information you put in there and produce it, uh, the tweens for you. So we started off this uh, 04 start.fla uh, file, and you have a bunch of layers, man, woman, middle car, right car, and all this kind of stuff. What we need to really do is we have to add a couple more layers. Now, right now, the window's pretty damn big, right? Um, we can choose uh, a different kind of view to fit the stage. Right now, I, I fit it around 40% because it's so big as an example. And remember, we can always change the size of the actual stage itself so it's smaller and it'll actually become a smaller size stage. But let's leave it the way it is. So one thing we're going to start with is we're going to change the cityscape, right? So what we're going to do first is lock all the layers and we're going to create a new layer above the footer and we're going to call it city. So let's do that. So here we are, here's the footer and I'm going to add in a new layer and I'm going to call it city. Here's my city layer, okay? And then what we're going to do is we're going to drag this uh, city background JPEG from the library right onto the, into the, into the uh, uh, frame number one, right? So here we are. We're, going, we're on frame number one. And here I'm just going to pull myself in here. I'm going to lock all the other layers. So here we are. I'm locking all the layers. And you know what? Let's make them all invisible too. So I make them all invisible except for my city layer. I'm going to go to my library, and I'm going to drop in um, and where is it? 
that's a city movie. Where is that? Here, the city bg.jpg. I'm going to drop it onto the uh, uh, my stage. Now, where I drop it in is important. Right now, I've dropped it in kind of the middle of my stage, and it's coming in on on frame one, right? And if you notice, it persists. It doesn't go away because of my other frames being generated. What's happened is Flash automatically adds in one keyframe and a bunch of frames that can perpetuate the city being shown. Remember that every time there's a frame that's inserted into uh, different positions, all it does is it copies the keyframe forward in time so that it matches the length of the, of the, uh, of the animation. Okay, so we've done that. And what we want to do is says set the value of x to 0 and y to 90. So it's kind of a little bit down. So if we go there, we click on the actual, we use our selection tool, click on the city J, uh, JPEG, and the x position is 0, but the y position is 90 right here in our position and size. So it kind of puts us in the middle of the screen like that, right? What we want to do is we want to create a motion tween, right? So we're going to right-click on the image, and we're going to choose Create Motion Tween, or you can also do Insert Motion Tween, but I like right-clicking onto it. So if I right-click and I go Create Motion Tween, what's the problem with this? Whenever we create a motion tween, we cannot create it off just a JPEG. It's got to be some kind of symbol, or else the, J the, the motion tween won't work, right? So it's going to ask us to do that. It's going to say, hey, the selected image can't do it. Do you want to create a symbol? And we say, okay. When we do, Two things happen. My city motion tween is the size of my entire animation now. It's way, way over here, if you notice, right? It goes from frame 1 to frame 190. So here it is. The other thing is that my motion tween for the city is just being called symbol 1. I don't like that. I think we need to rename it. And chances are, if I know them, they're probably going to ask you to rename it anyway. Right? So, to me, I think it's always better to name it so that we understand what it means. They don't ask us to do it here, because basically what it says is, do you want to convert the selection to a symbol? We say yes, and then what we should go ahead right away and do is produce a name for the symbol to make us understand what it means. So I want to call that city. So let's just go back. And I could, I could call it city BG again if I wanted to. It doesn't really matter because it's an um, instance of a movie, movie clip, right? But I'm just going to call it city, just so I know what it is, right? Okay, we got that done. We put it on the movie. And now what we want to do is we want to move it to frame 190. And um, what, what they want us to do is... Uh, go from uh, from frame 190 and they want to select the the cityscape itself right and while holding on the shift screen uh, move the the instance up the stage right and we want to move it to uh, a position where y is equal to zero okay so let's just try that so again I'm going the reason why I'm going to frame 190 is because remember flash is going to interpolate the changes in our position so here we are frame 190 I'm clicking onto it I've got the symbol instance right here, the, the city symbol, and I'm going to move this, and I can do this, um, you know, by dragging and moving this thing, right, from a position perspective, right, or, here we are, right, or what I can also do is I can, um, I can put it in manually. So if I just drag and uh, drag this thing up, as an example, so here I am, I'm dragging it, I can keep going, but what I really want to do is make this Y zero, because that's what they've asked for. So if you notice, it just moves up just a little bit from where it is um, up to where it's going. If I was to animate this now, so if I press Command or Control Enter, right, the city kind of rises. There's a couple things too. The city keeps going, if you notice. It's going to keep going and keep going and keep going. And it's, it's going to continue to rise, right, even after the, the, uh, um, the action stopped. Now it's going to loop. Okay, there it loops again. Right? So the city comes up and it keeps rising, except the problem is that it's, it's kind of, it's really, really big, and it's rising in front of our actors. 
So we're probably what we're going to probably do is we're going to uh, change the transparency on it for sure. All right. So we've clip previewed the animation. Sometimes what we want to do is we want to change the the pacing or the timing of the actual uh, uh, tween itself. And the way we can do that is we can drag keyframes around the time the timeline to change the pacing. Remember, the keyframes keep track of when any changes happen. Right? That's what happens. So if I go, if I want to change the duration, I can just expand or pull my uh, um, the frames as far or as, as, as uh, over or as back as I want. So what I want to do again is I want to go to the end of my tween span in the city layer. And then what I want to do is I want to wait till it changes to the double header error, uh, arrow. And then what I want to do is I want to click and drag at the end of my of my uh, um, uh, of my stuff back to frame sixty, right? So it's going to shorten my 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 span, but it's going to make it happen a lot quicker. So let's try that. So if I go back to here to the city. And I wait till it becomes double haired arrow, and then I move it back. If I keep moving this all the way back till it's 60, so here we are, and this is about 60 right here. Right? Here it is. So now what happens? It goes, it comes up much more quickly, right? And then it disappears. So that's kind of bad. So this is what happens. Let's take a look at that. So it comes up, and poof, it disappears. And then these things come charging at you, right? Then it'll repeat. It'll come up, and then as soon as it gets to frame 60, it's gone. But it comes up a lot faster now than before because I've shortened the time span, right? I've taken the keyframes and I've compressed them. So now it looks like it's, a, it's the same action's happening in a shorter time frame. All right. <laughs> now, if I, it also tells me to, in this particular example, uh, move the, the span forward so it's going to frame 10. So now I'm really compressing it. So I go here. Here's my cityscape. And I go to the front of it. Wait till it becomes a double-headed arrow like this. And I move it to frame 10, which is about here. That's actually frame 11. Let's move it back. Frame 10. Okay, so now, again, nothing happens. There's no city. And then frame 10, it appears. Poof. And then it comes out. Right? Now the actress are also there. I'm just hiding them right now. Okay, let's take a look. So frame 10, poof, it comes out and gone. Right? And again, so it waits, and then it, and then it appears slightly later. There's a bit of a delay before it comes out. It doesn't come out right away. All right. So I want the city to last, right? Otherwise, if I don't add um, more frames, as an example, Right? Then what happens is after frame 60, it disappears. Right? But I need to add additional frames all the way to the end of, of uh, frame 190 right? for me to hold my animation. Remember, imagine if I'm teleporting something in, onto the stage, and the stage is the universe. So I put it onto the universe. Right? As soon as there's no more frames, it disappears. It doesn't exist anymore. Right? It literally becomes, it leaves your world. Right? So you have to maintain it. You have to hold the energy to hold this, this energy there. And the only way to do that is to add uh, extra keyframes or extra frames, empty frames, to hold the image. So let's do that. So what I want to do is I want to go to the end of my tween span, right? And then I want to hold down my shift key and I want to drag my span all the way to frame 190, right? So the last keyframe stays at frame 60, but the additional frames are all added to 190. So there's no other changes that are happening. That's what happens. So let's go back. So here I am at frame 60. Here's the keyframe, this black dot. That's what that keyframe is, right? And if I wait till this double-headed arrow, press my shift key, and then pull it over, way over to frame 190, not too far, there. Now it creates a bunch of extra empty, like, or non-keyframe tweens. All right, so the city just stays there. So once it gets there, once it rises to its point right here, right at frame 60, it reaches its maximum point. It just holds. So let's see, like, let's see that effect. So it comes up, and it holds. So it comes up and holds, and then it loops, and it does it again. So we're closer.
All right, so if we want to move the keyframe, again, all we're doing when we move the keyframe is we move where we're looking at any changes that happen, right? Again, if I want to look at that keyframe at frame 60, and it's only that that's selected, right? <coughs> I can move it around to wherever I want. So if I move it to, to frame 40 and drop my mouse, so here I am, I'm back on uh, my cityscape. Here I am at frame 60, I click onto it. So now only this one, just this one is selected, right? And I move this back, so here I am, 60, and I move this back to frame 40, right, and drop it, right? All, what have I done there? I've actually moved it back a little bit, but not much. So let me go back, undo. So again, I'm dragging this keyframe, right? So here I am, if I put, put the playhead back to there, here I am, I'm, I'm frame 60. And if I take that keyframe and I back it up to frame 40, and I let go, my actual keyframe is moved, and then from that point on, it's, that's what's copied in for, to the rest of my frames. Okay, so let's take a look at the effect of that. So it comes up, boom, and then it just holds. Right, so it's a little bit faster than before, too. So transparency is something else. We've changed, we've actually animated movement, but now we've got to change transparency. So the transparency is modified, right? So we want to go to the first frame, right? And what we want to do when we get to the first frame is change that alpha value to zero. Remember how we saw the finished movie? It was transparent at frame zero, at frame one or at the beginning, and then afterwards what ended up happening was when we moved it over to, um, uh, to later on, right, when we went to frame 40 when we have our frame, it becomes fully visible. We changed our, our colors to fully opaque here. So let's do that. So here we are at, uh, here's the movie. I go to frame 40. I'm going to go to frame 10. Here we are, right? And when we look at our... Um, if I go to transform, or my color, sorry, my color, my transparency, my alpha, uh, my alpha transparency right now is 60, right? I want to make it go to zero, right? And that didn't work. <laughs> Let's try that again. Changed, I, I changed the wrong thing. I was right. Oh, color effect, sorry. I'll be all right. So color effect, I go to alpha, and right now it's 65, like I was right. And what I want to do is I want to make it down to zero. So I put zero for my alpha. So right now, it looks like it's, it's uh, invisible. If I shift back to frame 40, it's still invisible. But what I want to do is on frame 40, I want to change my alpha back to 100. So it's going to be fully... Uh, uh, fully visible at frame uh, at frame 40. Now, if I run it, it starts off being opaque and becomes visible after. Boom, boom. So again, it starts off opaque, or sorry, uh, transparent, and then slowly, gradually becomes it becomes opaque. So again, we're doing your ad, your your uh, going back to your assignment number one, right? For when you do your uh, flash banner ad, this kind of effect, this from transparencies coming into you know something that's more opaque is a good effect. It, may, it looks neat. That's something that, that kind of appears onto the stage. All right. Filters. Filters allow us to do like all kinds of special effects, right? They allowed us to add things like blurs and drop shadows and stuff. And one of the things we noticed in our finished product was the girl was blurred out. Right, so she was blurry, blurry, blurry when she started off. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. You want to do it? Not uh, No, man. It's okay. I'm just, I'm just recording. <laughs> all right. Uh, you all right? Otherwise? Yeah. Good, man. Uh, flash. Animation two D two. Let's go ahead. All right, so uh, we got these instances, and what we want to do here, we want to make the actors visible, and we want to kind of gray out everything else. Let's try that first. So again, if I look at my timeline right now, nothing is visible. I want to make everything visible. So here it is. Everything's visible. I want to lock my city, and I want to make my woman and my man unlocked. 
I also want to turn everything off except for them. So they're the only people that I care about right now. The only things I care about is just them. They start coming in around um, frame, frame 23. So that's the first thing I want to do. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to add the blur filter to the woman right when she starts off. And she's going to stay blurred right, um, for a while. What we want to try and do is make both the blur X and blur Y values 20, and we'll keep the quality at low for now. So let's go back. So here we are. Um, I've got the woman. I'm going to highlight her, even though we can't see her right now. right? And what I want to do here, no problem. Oh, I got the wrong person. One man. And you know what? Let me lock, let me lock up the man for a second because I'm, I'm hitting him by accident. All I care about is the woman. Here's the woman. And I want to go to filters. And if you notice, filters are already open for me. If I go down here and add a filter, I can add blur. And what I want to do is add this. I want to kind of make them the same. If I break, if I if I leave them chained up like this, they're linked, right? I can drag this across, and they're both going to go to about 20. So she's going to be about uh, 20 pixels blurred. Like the blur radius is going to be about 20 pixels at the beginning when she first appears. But only her. The man is going to be crisp. So let's take a look at that. So she comes into play, and she stays blurred, right? Remember before, after the cars come in, we want to make her unblurred. We want to take the blurriness away. But right now... This great effect, what this does from a special effects perspective, is it makes it so that the actor in the front, it looks like he's in focus, and the actor behind him looks like she's out of focus, right? So it kind of gives us emphasis on the, on the, on the actor in the front. So what we want to do, it says, is about keyframe 140, right? And uh, what we want to do is we want to insert a keyframe, a filter keyframe at around 140. So there's different keyframes we can add. And one of them is we can add in, like, like it shows here, a position keyframe, a scale keyframe, different kinds of keyframes. This one, we're going to add in a filter keyframe. Let's try that out. So we're going to add the filter keyframe at 140 for the woman. So we're going to scrub the timeline. We're going to go over to 140. Right? And if you notice, she's still there. Right? Here we are. 140. I want to click on the woman, right? And I'm going to insert, right click, okay? I'm going to insert a keyframe, and it's going to be a filter keyframe. So there it is. So I've got a keyframe in there. And all we're tracking, we're not tracking position, we're just tracking filter, like kind of filter, the filter effect that's going on. All right? Now we're going to move the playhead to 160, right? And when we do that, we're going to make the blur filter go away. We're going to make it so that the blur filter is, uh, is 0, 0. So the filter is going to go right away. She's going to become sharp. She's going to snap to focus, right? So here we are. We're going to move the playhead to 160, right? And then we're going to go here again. We're going to add in another keyframe for filter. And this time, right, when we click on her, we're going to make the blur effect go down to zero. So she's going to be, she's going to be sharp now, right? Again, let's play the animation, right? City comes up. She's all good. The cars come in, right? And then she snaps to focus, right? She's all blurry. The cars come in, and then she snaps to focus. And it happens. Flash does all the work for us. So basically... It interpolates all the differences between where the, 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 uh, the filtering started and where it ended and how she became in focus and where she was blurry. Again, all, the reason why I'm looking at just the woman here is because I don't want to clutter my screen with all the other assets. So I've turned them all, uh, the visibility for them all off. Okay, what we've done filter keyframes, we've done movement keyframes. Um, what we want to do is, if I want to view 
a particular keyframe, right? Like I want to view a particular span, I can view them all if I want, <coughs> or only some. Let's say I want to insert a keyframe. I can insert a keyframe exactly how I did it. I can insert a keyframe just for one type of filter, or I can insert a keyframe for everything. Whatever property I want, I can insert. Color, rotation, the skew, the scale. We're going to learn more about the motion editor uh, later in this session, but what it does, and it actually appears right next to our movie, so let's go back to the movie. If you notice these tabs here, there's an output tab, a compiled errors tab, and there's also a motion editor, right? If I click on the woman, the motion editor gives us an idea of almost like in a graphical layout. I'm just going to make this a little bigger for you guys to see it. What it looks like for different effects. So, for example, right now, um, I'm, and again, this is the playhead down here. I can look back, and here we go. If you notice, the blur effect right? She was blurry, 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 but at frame 140, she started to sharpen up. So from frame 140 to frame 160, the blur effect uh, went to zero. And it shows you the gradual decrease in that effect. So I can go right down to frame, I can actually click on a frame that I want to look at, and I can scrub the, the, the timeline here inside the motion editor, and I can actually look at a, a graphical view of what it looks like. So here, as an example, right, I can see she's coming into focus, or she's being she's being shown gradually. So here she starts off, she's invisible, and then gradually, gradually from about frame uh, zero to about frame forty, she starts becoming in, she kind of starts coming into focus, and then she comes, she actually you actually can see her you know, being from, from uh, 0 uh, alpha all the way uh, to 9, 100 alpha. So alpha transparency changed from 0 to 100 uh, over 75 frames. Okay, so this is another view. The motion editor gives us another view of, of what's happening on the timeline. And actually gives some really cool, um, really cool options for, uh, to, in, to include easing, which we're going to talk about in a bit as well. All right. So what we want to do is we want to add this third car to the project. So we saw that there was three cars. There was one in the middle, one on the right. And now we're going to add the third one. Right? Okay. So what I want to do is I want to lock all the layers. I want to insert a new layer inside the cars folder, right? And I want to rename it left car. Okay? So let's go there. So here I am. I'm going to lock all the layers again. Right? I'm going to make all the all the layers are invisible again, so I don't care about the woman anymore. And now I'm going to go into the cars folder and click on the cars folder, or the middle car actually, and I'm going to add in a new layer. <coughs> I'm going to call this layer left car. There we go. I got nothing in there right now, but what I want to do is I want to pull this this car in there, right? As an example, and um, here's here's the actual movie clip for the car, right? Let's see what they want us to do. So I want to go to frame 75, and I want to add in a new keyframe. So I can do that by right-clicking, add key, insert keyframe, or I can press F6. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this movie clip called Car Left from the library onto the stage right there at frame 75. So let's go frame 75. Here I am. Right? And I'm only, I only care about the left car anyway, so I click on there. Insert a keyframe. Here I am. Here's the keyframe. And inside this area here, I'm going to add in Car Left. So here we are. I'm just going to drag the car in there. There's my movie clip symbol. Okay. Now there's a couple things I need to do. I'm just going to lower this a little bit so you guys can see it. I've just dragged this onto the stage. So here I'm going to go to my select tool, right? 
And if you notice, it's not really centered. I'm just going to make it so that it takes up the whole stage. It doesn't give us direction on where to put it. And if I, if I look at the other cars just for a second, just to see where they are, I'm kind of high, right? Here's the two cars. And if I scrub the timeline, right, I'm right here. And what I want to try and do is move this car. I'm not sure if this is the right position. It might have to come lower, right? Let's go back to 75. I really haven't done an animation yet. And I don't really care about the middle car or the right car right now. Oops. Only care about the left car. So I want to make the car smaller, right? And I want to change the car to about 29.4% is what they've asked us to do. Just about. So here I am, I click on the car, I click on my uh, transform tool, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just make the car smaller, and if I want to check my transformation, just to see what it's like, and if I want to see a numeric transform, again I'm holding down shift key, any changes that I make, here we go, 29.4% is what they're asking for, so I can actually type it in here, and then it's going to stay the way it is. It's also asking us to put the car at 7, 10, and, and 488. So we'll do that from a proper, from a uh, position perspective. So here's 7, 10. I knew it was a little bit high. And 488. So there it is. So the car is there, where it's supposed to be. <clears throat> I want to change the alpha to the car to zero, starting off, so it's invisible, just like the other cars, right? So I'm going to go here to the color effect. I'm going to go to alpha. And I'm going to start the car off at zero. So it's invisible. Okay. And then I'm going to right click on the stay, this car, and I'm going to go create motion tween. Now it's already a symbol. And when I create the motion tween, it adds all the, the, uh, the extra frames in there all the way to the end. So here it is all the way to the end. Right? There's my left car. Back to frame 75. Okay, so now I'm going to go to frame 100, and then I'm going to change the transparency in the properties inspector to 100. So it's going to go, that's where it's going to appear. So from 75 to 100, the car is invisible, and then when it reaches frame 100, I want to add a keyframe. I want to add a keyframe. Frame 100, right? And again, what kind of keyframe do I need? All I need is color right now, right? So I had a color keyframe, and I want to make the, my alpha transparency 100. So there it becomes 100% um, visible. Now I want to make the car larger, right? I still, I'm still at frame 100. I'm going to make the car larger, and it's going to go... Um, the car's got to be 1379.5 and 467.8 is what it says. Let's try that out. So I'm going to take the shift key, and I'll make the car larger. Properties inspection I need. So what is it? Thirteen seventy nine point five and four sixty seven point eight. There we go. Okay, and it's going to be at 607 and 554. 607 and 554. All right. 
So not only have we made the car from invisible to visible, but we've already, we've already also transformed it. And if you notice, because we made a positional change as well, it's changed the keyframe, so it's not just um, color keyframe, but also position keyframe. If I command enter to run the movie, the steady state comes up, and the cars rumble in all at the same time. Now the other two cars seem to be There seems to be an issue, doesn't it? To me, the middle car um, is behind the left car. It shouldn't be. The left car should be behind the middle car. The middle car should be the front car. So that's one thing we have to make a change to. Otherwise, it doesn't look right. So the way we do that is, again, the left car is here. We're going to drag it underneath the middle car, like this. And now we run the movie again, just to make a change. Now the middle car comes where it's supposed to come, beneath, behind the, uh, the middle car. Middle car first, and then the left car. These two cars seem to be rumbling, though, but my left car is not doing anything. It's not bouncing around at all. All right. And that's what we've done. There are a bunch of motion presets that we can add in um, if we really wanted to. We could add motion presets for the car itself. We can add in a bounce if we wanted to make the car bounce. We could do all kinds of stuff that allow. And if you look, if you want to look at the motion presets panel, it's you go to Windows, Motion Presets, and there's a lot of stuff you can put in here uh, automatically. So Window, and if you go to Motion Presets, it'll pull up the panel, which is right here. And then there's some default presets that allow you to, to create a bounce in, as an example. So if I, let's just try that out. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to click on the car. I'm going to go to motion presets. And I'm going to bounce in uh, on a fly-in blur, blur bottom, like this, from the bottom. And there's an example of what it's going to look like. And I'm going to apply it. I'm going I'm to stop it in a second. But let's just try this out. OK? So here it is. I've applied the preset. And let's see how it looks. So it goes whoop. Not what we really wanted, but see how it blurs it in? It kind of adds that preset in there, and only it lasts for so many frames. So let's check it out. Whoop. Disappears, right? All right? Let's try that. Let's see that again. The car flew up, right? Let us go back. Let us undo that change. There it is. Let's try it again. Let's try another another preset. So I go here. So the fly in blur uh, blur bottom. Um, let's say I want a spiral in 3D. Right. So I want the car to spin in 3D. I don't I don't know if that, if I like that. Or a fly in blur left. No, fly in blur right. And there is no fly in blur diagonal, unfortunately. But let's try this one. Let's fly in blur right, or blur top. So do that. Say yes. And again, if you notice, it shortens our, our keyframe, so it comes, kind of comes in from the top. Whoop! And drops down from nowhere. And if you want to extend that, we can add more keyframes. But just this is just for fun, so you understand what happens. And then a car falls down from nowhere. Right? Let's try that again. And there's the car. Right? And the reason why I want to show you this is because sometimes um, creating a preset motion like that <clears throat> is a quick and dirty way of making an animation look a certain way. Like, for example, when you're doing your flash banner ad, you want the car, you want a bunch of stuff to happen that'll take you a lot longer to do. And uh, it's the exact um, motion preset that you want, and you don't want to program it by, by hand, you can use a default. And the car's back. Um, for now, let's let's do this. Let's save our our car as 
04 working copy FLA, right? So we're going to say file, save as, and instead of start, we'll say 04 working copy. So that way we know our the one that we're working on. And we'll save it. There it is, our our, our working copy saved. And now what I want to do is I want to kind of open up a new file. Actually, we'll open up one that's existing already. And if we go to uh, 04 motionpath.fla, that's the one I want to look at right now. So here's a little spaceship, right? And there's a motion path, right? So it goes from here to here, right? It actually tracks the motion. I've opened up 04 motionpath.fla for those people that are following along with me. And let's just go back to uh, uh, show all. 90%. There we go. Even that's not good enough. If I run the, run the code, I mean, I run the program, it just goes like this. It kind of loops. The motion path is set from the top left to the bottom, just like that. So what it allows us to do is we can actually take the path, right? Um, and we can drag the path wherever we want. So right now it's kind of at the top left corner. We can move it the whole path. So it moves the, the entire path from one place to the other. So here I'm moving it from here to there as an example, right? And if I run it now, it's kind of the, the position and the path has changed, right? I also, when I have the free transform tool, I can scale or rotate the path to do whatever I want with, right? So as an example, right, I can, um, I can change it so that I can modify the path like it's like by using like this, uh, almost like this Bezier uh, curve that we do when we use the pen tool, when we draw with the pen tool, right? So let's try that out. So we have a, a path and we want to make it travel in a straight line. So first I want to put this thing back where it was. There it is. And now what I want to do is I want to kind of pick the pen tool and underneath the pen tool this is add um, anchor point. And what I can do is that I can actually add an anchor point anywhere in the path I want. Let me just go back to the first layer there. Oops. Tween span. That's yes, right. That's right. No. It's still going to give us the same error again. How do you do it again? I forgot. Convert anchor point tool. I'll be okay. I'll be alright. What you're doing here is you're what you're you're gonna do is you're gonna change this anchor point to Bezier curves. Right? So you can create um, you can change your the curve of the of the uh, of the flight of the of the ship to whatever you want by adjusting these points. And you have the same kind of control that you would normally have, right? So if I, if I do the same thing now, now I'm going to have a different uh, path to my plane, right? One thing I want to do, though, because it kind of looks funky, right, is I want to orient the path, right? I probably want to do that so the plane or the ship follows the same its nose points in the right direction. So if I actually click onto it now, it's going to point, right? So you can orient the path. Orient the path is right here. So if I click on the path, there's a little click, there's a little button called orient the path. So 
I mean, what it quickly does for you, it allows you to um, to create a path, and then what you're what you're able to do is you can swap between targets. You can actually drop in there this alien guy, and he'll swap in for the plane. So the way you do that is if you have an alien on the timeline, here's your here's your library, here's my alien, right? And I want to drop him in here on top of the plane. It says, do you want to replace the existing tween target? Right? I say okay. And now the alien's there instead of the plane. Now I, I pick him and now he turns upside down, right? So there's my alien. Right? It's not the plane anymore. Kind of a weird little alien, right? We kind of did that. Let's pause here. Before we get to creating nested animations, I want to pause for a bit of a break, get some coffee in us and all that kind of stuff, and we'll come back in like 10 minutes. <laughs>